you. Let's, let's see if you feel that way in five minutes, all right? You ready to have a good time? Good, let's get out of here and go skiing, all right? Because that's my idea of a good time. I'll tell you, the last time I was here is 1980, over 40 years ago. And I want to thank you all for leaving everything just the way it was. I mean, it's amazing. I love what you didn't do to this town. It's fantastic. Yeah, I think you all admit, this town needs to be Swiffer, all right? I need to get a little dust off the things and get started again. I got a pep talk from the producers before I came out here. Uh, they're like, Johnny, we'd like to speak to you about something. We have a few rules here. Um, you need to refrain from salty language. I'm like, OK, when you say salty language, do you mean you don't want me to swear, or I'm not allowed to do jokes about Salt Lake City? <laughs> because I got like 45 minutes on Salt Lake City, uh, and it's going to be a really bad show, so. <laughs> uh, so I got to tell you, the pandemic, I mean, I don't know how to address this. I mean, I was going to come out and say, how are you enjoying the pandemic? But uh, that's kind of upside down. Everything's upside down with the pandemic. I never thought that you would uh, go into a, a bank with mask and gloves and make a deposit. <laughs> right? And it's like so counterintuitive, you know? I went, in, I went in with a mask and gloves and the woman gave me money. I'm like, please, don't call the cops. I'm not going to do anything. Uh, what else? I mean, e even uh, uh, church. I sneezed in church and you thought a shotgun went off. You know, people were diving under the pews and... It was crazy. Yeah. You know, the ironic part about sneezing in church is that I sneezed in church and nobody said, bless you. <laughs> I'm like, really? You know? So crazy. Birthdays are not the same. You can't blow out your candles. Huh? Oh, it's your birthday? Can't blow out your candles. Your wish is not going to come true. You'll never be a millionaire. Right? And the kids today, wow, I have to tell you, you, I don't know if you have kids, but if you think your kids today are not that bright, you wait 15 years to these kids today that were homeschooled. Get, oh yeah, they, once they get in the workforce, watch out. These kids who were homeschooled by some mother who drank a bottle of Pinot Grigio for breakfast. There's going to be a long line at McDonald's for jobs, I can tell you right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. My wife and I, we, uh, we live in Manhattan, and, um, you know, during the pandemic, when it started in March, we were locked in our apartment for three months. We couldn't go out at night. Uh, you know, only go out during the day for a little bit to get stuff. And it's unusual because I was, I'm married 10 years, and I never spent this kind of time with my wife. You know, I spent quality time, but never quantity time. You know what I mean? It's a totally different ball game. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there, and my wife's the only person there, and I'm actually starting to listen to her. You know? My, my, yeah, my ears started to work. You know what I mean? And I'm like finding out, after 10 years, I'm finding out things about my wife that I never knew. I'm like, I never knew my wife didn't have a middle name. Right? She goes, I can't believe you didn't know that. I said, I didn't even, no, I didn't even know you were blind in one eye. I, I was shocked. You know? So crazy. Everything's crazy. I mean, you can't picture any of this happening, right? It's nuts, right? Just imagine it's the year 2015. All right? Let's go back. It's 2015, and you're on a job interview. And you're acing the interview. And it goes down to the last question. And he goes, Mr. So-and-so, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> and you go, well, I'm locked in my house with my wife. I can't go out. There's no toilet paper. You can't get hand sanitizer. Uh, I'm working from home, but I'm happy. He's like, all right, security, I got a nutcase up here. Can you get this guy out of here? Right? Uh, what else is going on? 
Oh, I got to tell you, man, I'm not used to it. Do uh, you guys know who you're voting for? Did you make up your uh, minds? You guys, you guys know? How many clap if you know who you're voting for? <laughs> All right. I'm not going to ask you, but I find it interesting that every presidential year, uh, Domino's comes out with a series of presidential pieces, pizzas. I don't know if you know that. You can order a pizza from Domino's that's named after your favorite uh, politician or candidate. Like, you can call up Domino's and say, can I have the Bernie Sanders pizza? The Bernie Sanders pizza, in other words, you, you order it, you pay for it, and everybody else gets to eat it. <laughs> right? Um, you can order the Joe Biden pizza. You order it, and it goes to somebody else's address. <laughs> or you can order the Donald Trump pizza. It's big, it's huge, it's unbelievable. Uh, we're gonna make pizza great again. It's a taco. Um, <laughs> so, you can get it. I don't know, I just find the election so interesting. I'm, I, I, I have three nieces that are voting for the first time, and they're really woke politically correct, very hypersensitive kids, just like, you know, what everybody's dealing with. And I have to watch myself. They, they want to know everything. Oh, Uncle Johnny, who are you voting for? I'm, I'm not going, I don't really want to talk about it. No, who, do, what? I said, look, kids, I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I don't like the government. I'm like a musket away from being a revolutionary. <laughs> you know? They're like, oh, my niece goes, oh, if Donald Trump gets elected again, I'm moving out of the country. I'm like, really? You're 18. I'd be more impressed if you move out of your mother's house, you little <laughs> punk. You don't even have a job. You move out of the... What are you going to do, put your knapsack on and walk to Canada? <laughs> These kids are crazy. I can't believe it. They're amazing, and they want to know everything. Oh, good Johnny, what do you think about climate change? I said, I don't know. I'm don't, not a big fan. I, I don't know much about it. Oh, you don't have an opinion on climate change? Yes, I got an opinion. I'm concerned about the oceans. What are you concerned about the oceans? I said, I don't know. The other day, I went fishing, and I caught a tuna, and it was in the can. <laughs> so they think I'm nuts. They go, what about recycling? You into recycling? I said, I recycle. She goes, really? That's good. I said, yeah, I had a girlfriend when I was 20, and I dated again when I was 30. That's recycling, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, sort, I'm known as the crazy uncle. You know, and the kids are such phone snobs, you know? I mean, they've got to have the latest, the greatest. I don't know how my sister and brother pay for it all. It's pretty amazing, you know? They have to buy phones all the time, upgrade, upgrade. And then kids are like, oh, Uncle Johnny, what kind of phone do you have? I said, I have an iPhone 5. You have an iPhone 5? Did you lose your job? <laughs> like I was some kind of low. I said, can I can call anywhere you can call, you little idiot. I said, I can't believe it. I said, when Uncle Johnny was growing up, the phone used to be on the wall. It used to be screwed into the wall. And it used to ring four times, and you had to run to get the phone. And if you didn't get there by the fourth ring, they hung up, and you didn't even know who it was. You didn't even know if the phone call was for you. You're like, really, Mom? Is he lying? Phones were on the wall. You people live like animals. And I'm like, oh, my God, I turned into my mother. I'm telling stories about how bad my childhood was because the phone was on the wall. Because my mother was mad because we were the first generation. She had to drive to school, right? We got to ride to school because my mother was so mad because she had to walk to school three miles uphill, both ways, in the snow, one shoe with a hole in it. That's what my life was like. We ate mayonnaise sandwiches every day for three years straight, and we were grateful. <laughs> I'm not, I, 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 grateful? It sounds like you were poor. I'm not grateful. And I'm doing it to my niece. I'm going, you know, Sophia, when Uncle Johnny was growing up, there was no Google. Really? There was no Google? How'd you find stuff out? Oh, well, they used to tell you, go look it up in an encyclopedia. Really? Yeah, and if you couldn't spell, you were screwed. <laughs> and Uncle Johnny can't spell, so he's a comedian. <laughs> 
But that's the way it is. You got kids? Okay, I know you gave your kids everything. And you probably gave him stuff that you didn't have. But for some reason, he's going to sit his kids down and tell his kids how horrible he had it. <laughs> how horrible. How rough. That's him right there. <laughs> I couldn't have planned that. I couldn't have planned that. He's going to tell his kids, you have no idea what it was like when I grew up. I grew up in a pandemic, a <laughs> pandemic. I couldn't go out of the house. I had to wear a mask. That's why I work at McDonald's. I was homeschooled by your grandmother. I can't stand the smell of Pinot Grigio. <laughs> right? I don't know why it's like that. Just the whole phone thing is amazing to me. I never thought that I was one of the people that was attached to my phone. I never thought that I, my phone was my life. I was kidding myself. And I found out, you know how I found out? I dropped my phone in the toilet. <laughs> I dropped my phone in the toilet and I was like, ah, my phone! I was like looking at my whole life. It was unbelievable. I don't know what was worse, dropping it in the toilet or taking it out. <laughs> You know what scared, the, uh, I hate to use this phrase, you know what scared the crap out of me was how quick I put my hand in it. My phone, my phone! I took it out and <laughs> my wife goes, quick, quick, put it in white rice. Great, now we have yellow rice. Um, <laughs> then you get the phone, you gotta go to Apple, right? With those condescending geniuses that sit there and they just judge you the minute you come in. Yeah, yeah, I just, I, no, I, 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 you, she knows what I'm talking about. I can't believe no one's ever gone nuts in Apple. I've, I've never been treated friendly there. I've been I, every time I leave Apple, I feel like the village idiot. And I go in, I said, I need a new phone. And the guy goes, uh, yeah? He goes, do uh, you want to trade one in? I said, nah, I don't want to trade one in. So he goes, what happened to your old phone? I said, I don't want to talk about it. He goes, oh, you dropped it in the toilet, huh? So I said, all right, let's keep it low, okay? But people are rude with their phones, man. Rude. I can't believe it. I, I, I was uh, driving, and I pulled over into a rest stop, rest stop to get gas. Uh, you know, and then you go into the bathroom. You know, that's what you normally do. And there's a guy in the bathroom, in the stall, on his phone. He's the only one in there. And he's on the phone, and he's, I could hear the whole conversation. He's talking to his mother. He's going, Mom, I just stopped for gas. And I'm like, OK, what, what type of gas are you talking about? <laughs> she goes, Mom, I'll be there in 15 minutes. And like, he was so loud, I knocked on the stall. I said, excuse me, sir, can you do me a favor? And he goes, yeah, what? I said, can you put that on speaker so I could hear the whole conversation? <laughs> you know what he says to me? He goes, what are you, a comedian? <laughs> I said, what are you, a psychic? <laughs> I ran out of there before you stopped. Yeah. That's the way it is. It's crazy. Oh, boy. New craze. Uh, what's the new craze now? 23 and Me, huh? Right? The Ancestry.com? Did you do it? Any surprises? No, you're lucky. My sister, yeah, no, I'm telling you. People, I had a friend that found, he, a friend called me up, he goes, I got a, I got a, I got a brother and si sister in Pittsburgh. I said, what, what are you talking about? Somebody in my family did 23 and me, and I have a brother and sister in Pittsburgh. I said, how did that happen? He goes, well, my father drives his truck to Pittsburgh. <laughs> I said, okay, I can't wait to hear mine, right? <laughs> so my sister did it, and she wanted to surprise everybody, right? Uh, and she was going to make a big announcement at a July 4th barbecue. And the night before, she calls me up. She goes, you're the oldest in the family. i got to run this by you first. I said, well, wh what happened? She goes, look, just sit down. She goes, I want you to know, first of all, we're not 100% Italian. I said, really? Do you think that has anything to do with the fact that mommy's Polish? <laughs> I 
You dummy, I could have gave you the birth certificate. It's right on there. You paid a hundred dollars for that? She goes, yeah. She goes, well, we're 40% Eastern European, that's mommy. We're 40% Sicilian, that's daddy. She goes, here's where it gets complicated. We're 20% Iberian Peninsula. I'm like, what? Yeah, I'm like, what's that? I had to Google that. That's like the bottom of France, the top of Spain, and Portugal. So apparently, like 100 years ago, I had a relative who got pregnant in Ibiza. <laughs> Probably during a rave or something like that. I don't know. I'm not really sure. Then she goes on, and I don't know if you had this experience. We found, she goes, we found three first cousins in South Carolina. So I said, what are you talking about? She goes, there's three girls in South Carolina that are our cousins. She goes, um, our grandfathers were brothers and they got separated. Our grandfather ended up in the Bronx and they ended up in South Carolina. Um, they have the same last name. We have to go down there and meet them. I'm like, Janice, I am not going to South Carolina. Don't give these people your information. It sounds like a setup. I'm not doing it. Yeah, I'm going to go. They probably live in a trailer, all right? They're going to ask me for money. I'm not going to a NASCAR event. I'm, I'm, I'm just not going down there. So we go to South Carolina. And uh, here's the funny part. They own six golf courses, and they're millionaires. Yeah, and they lent me $5,000, so, uh... <laughs> always check out who your relatives are. Right? So crazy. Have you been out... Have you guys been out to dinner lately? Yeah. Huh? Is it not crazy? I mean, the new way to go out to dinner? The old way is you would go out and you would sit down. They'd give you the menus. The waiter goes, I'll be right back. I'll take your drink order. Now, it's a whole new ball game. You're out with six or eight people. The waiter comes over, he makes a statement. Um, is there anything I need to know? Is there anything you'd like to tell me? And then everybody around the table makes their decoration. Uh, I, I'm a vegan. Oh, and you, miss? I'm a vegetarian. I'm on the keto diet. I'm gluten-free, lactose intolerant, and allergic to nutmeg. I'm like, what the hell? And he comes to me, he goes, what about you, sir? I'm starving. I'm starving. Give me everything they don't want to eat. Everything. Okay? I, I want a piece of red meat, a beer, and give them a head of lettuce, okay? So crazy. Can't believe it. It's all nuts. That's what the world is coming to, boy. Uh, my wife wants to get a tattoo. Yeah, I see you got several hundred tattoos. <laughs> yeah. Was the first one difficult to get? No. No? My wife goes, oh, one out of four people, uh, one out of four people have a tattoo. I said, I'd rather you not get it. She goes, I want to get something over here on the forearm. I want to get... Uh, uh, live, laugh, and love. I'm like, you can't remember that? You gotta get a tattoo? You know what I mean? I mean, what if I put a post-it on the refrigerator, huh? <laughs> it's 23 and me. Unbelievable. So, I will say this. Um, um, there's... My wife asks me all the time, if you weren't a comedian, what would you do, right? Can you do anything else, you know? I, I don't know if, if you could do a normal job, Johnny. And I said, I, I think I would be a personal trainer. She goes, what makes you think you could be a personal trainer? Those people have to get certified. I said, I don't know, I think I could do it. I think I could stand there and count to 10. <laughs> One, two, look at you, three, four. Some more. Five, six, you're in the mix. Seven, eight, you're looking great. Nine, ten, let's do it again. Come on. Great. Really? Certified? I know, it's unbelievable. I got a friend that he, he pays his trainer $150 an hour. All right? $150 an hour, and he does a what's called a truck tire workout. 
<laughs> truck tire workout. For the first 30 minutes, he pushes a truck tire up a hill. <laughs> and for the next 30 minutes, he takes a sledgehammer and he smashes the truck tire. And he goes, it's the best workout I've ever had. I said, this is so, why don't you just get a job at a junkyard? <laughs> This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. He goes, no, the guy's great. He goes, I got a life coach, too. I pay him 100 a session. I said, what does he do? He goes, guy gives me great advice. I said, anybody here have a life coach? OK, because, no, save your money. I'm going to tell you what a life coach is. You know, that annoying, <laughs> you know that annoying friend that you have, that when you're in the middle of a catastrophe and your whole life is falling apart, they just look at you and say, look at the bright side. That's a life coach, but you pay him. That's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you so much for watching the comedy, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed performing for you. Now comes the time where you could show your appreciation. Uh, there's several buttons in front of you where you could click and give me a donation or a tip, any way you want to describe it. Just keep in mind, the last time I got a tip, I was 14 and I was a caddy on a golf course, so I'm long overdue for a little love, a little money. How about a little something for the effort? Once again, thank you so very much.